Hey, what's up, guys? It's Molotech. Welcome back. Recently, many people reached out to me and asked if they could run multiple helium miners at home. The answer is yes. There are actually multiple ways you can do this. Some methods are better than others. For example, you could hook up all your miners to one router. In this case, all your miners will be sharing one public IP address. And in this case, most of the time, one of your miners will be operating normally, all the other ones will be in relay mode. You will lose a lot of rewards if you're in relay mode and you will also add more load to the hotspots around you because other hotspots will be doing the P2P relay for you. And also, since all your hotspots are using the same IP, you won't be earning as much rewards. This was fixed a long time ago when they realized people are using one IP address to run multiple helium miners. So here I prepared a 5W for today's topic. First, what am I talking about? I'm showing you how to run two or more helium hotspots at home using self-made VPN service. So each helium hotspot will have its own public IP. And two, why am I doing this? Or why should you be doing this? One, simply because a lot of people ask me how to do this and I just happen to know how, so I decided to share this information with you. Two, some people may be asking, is this hacking? Is this allowed? So there's no official words saying it's not allowed and it actually has been discussed openly in the Helium official Discord in the past. And this is not hacking because I'm not teaching you how to geo spoof. And for those guys, if you think geo spoofing is just one click away, it's definitely a lot more complicated than that. What I'll tell you is, yes, some geo spoofers had to go through the same steps you're about to learn today. But there's a lot more they have to do to geo spoof their hotspot and make sure their hotspot can earn rewards like normal ones. So as long as you're not using this method to geo spoof, you should be fine. And next, who should be doing this? People in the past have asked me, they said, hey, can I set up one directional antenna, let's say a Yagi antenna, and cover the northern portion? And then can I set up another hotspot at home and cover the southern portion. So this way you will be able to reach out a lot further and at the same time you'll be covering all directions. Or for some reason you can only set up your hotspot inside and you could set up one on the eastern side of your house and now you're trying to set up another one on the western side of your house. And this way you could also have a better coverage. If this is you, then you should look into this method I'm about to show you. And when should you be doing this? I would say overall as soon as possible. And if you're not very technical, I would slot maybe like half a day to this task because there are probably some small steps you have to go through to figure out how exactly you need to do this. And there's some troubleshoot you have to go through. Maybe you need to hop onto our Discord and ask questions. And by the way, I will link the Discord in the description below. The last thing is how. We will be getting into this for the rest of the video. Quick pause here. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and like our videos. For every like we receive, $1 will be donated to support one of the charities each month. And you can check out our previous month donations under our community tab on YouTube channel. All right, without further ado, Let's get this started. Let's talk about some requirements. So you need more than one helium hotspot, of course. If you want to run multiple helium spot, it doesn't make sense to have only one. However, you can set this up before your second miner arrives. So you will be ready when your second miner gets here. All you have to do is plug and play. And two is have a Raspberry Pi or a router with VPN support. It's a little bit more complicated with Raspberry Pi, and I know this video may already be very technical for some people, so I've decided to show you how to set up with a router like this. So this is just a very small travel router. It's actually very handy. You can set up all kinds of cool features and it looks very cool too. We're getting to this later. The next thing you need is a cloud service account. Azure, AWS, Google, or something else. In this case, I will be using Azure. You have to set up a virtual machine on Azure with a static public IP. I will show you how to do it. And by the way, you can actually set up 
a free Azure account. It will give you, I believe the $100 or $200 credits, and you will be able to use that for this project. And if you like it, then you can look into how to extend that credits in the future. You will also need a OpenVPN access account. This is actually a lot easier than you think to set up. And it's free for the first two connections you have. So this is the main task. This is also what you'll be expecting to learn. And if you're one of those people who want to get in the tech world, you can actually write this in your resume. So you will be able to create your own cloud VPN using OpenVPN and Azure. You'll also learn how to config Linux firewall rules using IP tables to allow port forwarding on the cloud end. Of course, you have to forward on your local and on the router too, but that's way too easy to do. And the third main task is setting up the OpenVPN access server account. All right, first thing first, let's go to Azure. As you can see, you can get a 12 months, 200 credit. So once you got your account, you log into the portal from portal.azure.com, and then you will see this homepage. I'm not gonna show you how to create resource group and all that. I'm just gonna show you how to create the access VPN. And if you want to learn how to use Azure and all that, there are plenty of courses on Microsoft's website or on other YouTube channels. So here I want you to click this create a resource and I want you to search for open V E and access server. So the first thing is called open VPN access server, click it and then click create. Just so you know, you don't have to do this. This will be much easier. But if you want to, you can spin up a Ubuntu server and install the OpenVPN access server yourself within the operating system. Here, just make up a resource group, create a new, or call it Helium VPN. And this is your virtual machine's name, make up something, Helium VPN 01. Because later on, you may, if you want to make a VPN 0203, uh, feel free. And region, since I'm in US East, I'm going to choose US East. And this will help you lower your latency. It's important because higher latency means lower rewards. Availability zone, we don't really need uh, any redundancy. This will lower your cost. Size here, it's using one of the cheapest ones, one virtual CPU and one gigabit of RAM. Here you can choose SSH or you can choose password. I will be using this for this video demonstration, but for better security, you should use SSH key. Username, let's just say Helium VPN test. Make up some passwords here. Click next. You don't really want to use premium SSD. It's more expensive. Go ahead and switch to standard SSD. Go to networking. You don't have to change anything here. So go to the next tab. Normally this auto shutdown is checked if you're doing it from scratch. Make sure this is unchecked. Otherwise at a certain time during the day, I believe default is 7 p.m. local time your VM will shut down and then you'll lose your VPN service. Next, nothing to do here. Uh, you can set your tags if you have a lot of Azure resource going on. Go to next and here it will just verify everything is correct. Once it's verified, you will be able to hit create and create your resource. When it's completely finished, you'll see your deployment is complete. Click go to resource. And here's something you need to remember, the IP address. Make sure you write this down somewhere. Next thing we need to do is use SSH. You can use PuTTY, or if you have SSH enabled in, on your Windows, you can use a command prompt or PowerShell. A good way to see if you have it installed is just type SSH and hit enter. And if you get the command back and saying, hey, this is how you use it, that means you already have SSH installed. So I'm using Windows 11, it looks like it's automatically installed. Go ahead and type SSH and typing your username. The one I created was called Helium VPN test at the public IP address. For me, it will be the one I copied earlier. I'm going to paste it here and then simply hit enter. You'll have to type in yes, and it will ask you for your password. After you type in your password, it will log you into the server. And this is what you will get. You'll get a bunch of things you're going to read. And this is the open VPN service, blah, blah, blah. Type yes. Otherwise you won't be able to use this. And you can hit another enter for the second question. And it says, please verify the network interface and the IP address to use by the admin web UI. In this case, you want to be able to use two because that is the public IP of this VPN. So hit two. Next, just leave a default. It will be 
943. So make sure you write this down too. This is the port you have to use to access your admin portal. Hit enter and enter and enter again. One more time. One more. Almost there. Okay, this part is very important. Remember, you can log into the admin web UI as OpenVPN. So this is your username. Write that down. Open VPN. You can change it. I'm not going to show you how in this video. And you just say yes. Activation key. You don't need one. Once you hit enter, it will do its own thing. It will start initializing and uh, config the Open VPN for you. Give it some time. The next step is very important. So what I want you to do is type in pass WD. And this is a command to change password. We want to change the password for our OpenVPN admin user, which is OpenVPN. Okay, so we need to use actually sudo command for this. We can type in sudo password OpenVPN. Make sure to create something secure, especially if you're using the default admin username OpenVPN. We will say password update successfully. From here, we will copy this link that says HTTP 52152 blah 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 and slash admin. And this is how we're going to access our OpenVPN server. In the PowerShell window, you'll have to type Control Shift C to copy this link. Open a new tab in your browser, paste it, and then hit enter. And it will say your connection isn't private because we didn't use any uh, certificate. Here, your username will be OpenVPN and password will be the one you just created with that command. And now you click sign in and click agree. And congratulations, you have just created your own free VPN using Azure service. And if this is the first time you create a VPN for yourself, you should be pretty proud of yourself. Next thing I want you to do is go to VPN settings. And because we're going to be doing port forwarding, we need static IP address. And here I want you to type in 10.10. .10 100.0 and network mask it doesn't really matter let's just use 24. we're only really going to be connecting up to two devices now scroll all the way down and click save settings now go to user management go to user permission you are going to create the first user you can call this something like helium hot spot check auto login more settings and local password make sure you set up a secure local password you will be using this ip address make sure you check use static and let's put in the network address we just created earlier and then dot zero let's switch to dot two and you're in need to remember this address. Now save settings. Go to the top and you see this address here. Copy the entire thing before slash admin. And we're going to use this port to access our user portal. Hit enter. All right, we need to type HTTPS double slash hit enter. And now we're doing the user login. I believe the user was a uh, helium hotspot and then use the local password you created the thing you need here is your self auto logging profile this is a config file you need to put in your router later click it it will download called client.ovpn so here if you want to use this vpn from your mac or your windows you can actually download the open vpn connect and uh, this will allow you to use this VPN like any other normal VPN. If you don't intend to use it, if you only want to use this for your miner, don't worry about it, any of these. Now our VPN is set up. Let's do some port forwarding. Go to Azure and I want you to go to the NAS security group we have created. Click networking and then here that's all the port that's opened uh, and I'm pretty sure you'll see that, hey, where's that uh, 44158 that we're very familiar with? Make sure you're under the inbound port rules, by the way. And here we're just gonna click add inbound port rules. Down here, destination port, we want 44158. And that tells you from any IP address, from any port requesting to your 44158 port. And this is actually allowed as long as this priority is lower than this deny all inbound and this rule name we can call it for 4158 and you can put in a description if you want and click add and now let's check the outbound rules make sure everything is allowed so next thing i want to do is typing this command here and as you can see this ip address is the one we set a static ip address and this is actually our router 
IP address. I'll put this command in the description below. Copy this entire command. This is the IP table rule. I want you to go to the previous PowerShell window and paste this rule. Hit enter. And then one more command you have to type in uh, ju this just to make sure it works. Sometimes without this command, it will work. Sometimes it will not. So just to, just to make sure it's sudo IP tables dash capital F and make sure it's capital F. Hit enter. Now we're all set. So there's still an issue with this because every single time if you restart this virtual machine, your rules will be reset. So you have to retype this rule in. In order to prevent that, when you establish persistence, we're going to install this package. Control C, enter, and hit yes. And it will say save current IPv4 rules. You hit yes. And once it's done processing, you will be all set. So now if for some reason this device auto boots, then you'll be covered. You won't need to reset the IP table rule again. So now we're done with most of the stuff on the cloud end we need to set up the router locally. So next thing you need to do is plug in this small router here and uh, it will have this one green light over here. Um, and that means the router is actually not working correctly. You need to be able to have at least uh, one more, the middle one, which is 2.4 gig Wi-Fi um, or the five gig Wi-Fi. So for my first router, I actually had to flash the firmware uh, for this one, I didn't have to, and all I had to do was on the side, if you flip up this antenna right here, there is a button on the side. Uh, it's actually a reset button. All you have to do is hold it, and then this light will blink, and then you just release it, and then you wait. And once it reboots, all three lights should come up. All right, all three lights are on. There are two ways you can connect to this router. One is with the ethernet, or you can use the Wi-Fi that's broadcasting. So in this case, I'm just gonna connect to the Wi-Fi and on the back of the router, it actually tells you what the Wi-Fi is and what the password is. So go ahead and use that. We need to access a router to set up our VPN. Go ahead and copy this VPN file we downloaded earlier. Once you have connected to the Wi-Fi, and you need to go to your browser and type in 192.168.8.1 and it will bring to the dashboard. You do the initial setup, your admin password, you can just set up anything you want and don't worry about this. And this could be a little bit confusing in the first place. This travel router is actually getting internet from my Wi-Fi. So what I want to do is over here, choose repeater, you can scan and then it will show you a bunch of Wi-Fi that you have and uh, make sure you just click your Wi-Fi and connect to it. Once you have connected your router to your Wi-Fi, I want you to go to the VPN tab here and click on Open VPN Client. And we will import our config file here. Click Add. And then all you do is drag and drop the file we copied earlier into this window. And it will say Success. You can add a description, uh, call it Helium VPN one, click submit. Here you will have a VPN. Click connect. And once it's, it take a few seconds to connect and then you will see it will start receive and send data. And this is how you know your VPN is working. And here you will see that, hey, um, I am my, uh, my IP address is actually the IP address we said earlier, you remember? And the uh, firewall rule. This is where we'll do a, our local firewall forwarding and uh, we'll do Helium. And uh, this is what we're gonna do. We'll take a port, um, external port will be 44158 because, and because this is where we'll be getting requests from our cloud VPN server. In external zone, make sure you choose OVPN because this traffic will actually come from our OpenVPN server. In our internal zone, make sure you also choose OpenVPN. So here you need to figure out what IP, local IP address your miner's using. And for example, I'm using the 192.168.8.178 and the internal port will be 44158. And some of you guys probably already familiar with this process because you may have to do this for your first Helium Miner. And from here, you just click Add, and that will be it. We are done. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And if you have questions, come join our Discord and follow us on Twitter. 
This is Modotech. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.